Has God predetermined every tiny detail in the universe, such as dust particles in the air? And then I should add here, including all our besetting sins. Yes. Uh, there's a great quote from Spurgeon about dust motes. I don't even know what a dust moat is, but when I get up in the morning in my room, there's a, a window to the side of the bed here, and a beam of light will be shining through at certain times of year when I get up. It's shining through, and as, as I look into the dark, I see nothing. As I look through the beam, I see the dust in the room. <laughs> no flying around saying, I'm breathing that stuff. Yes, you are. Um, so Spurgeon says, every one of those is keeping its position and moving through the air by God's appointment. Now, the reason I believe that is because the Bible says the dice are thrown in the lap and every decision is from the Lord. That's Proverbs, what, 1633? I'm not sure. Six, chapter 16 has a bunch of these verses in it from Proverbs. And um, why would he choose the die or the lot? is cast in the lap in every decision because he's trying to think of the most random thing he could think of. And, and he says that. So randomness is not random to God. God is not the least taxed by keeping every um, sub-nuclear particle in its place. I used to say electrons, but now there's something smaller than electrons. <laughs> Uh, every, everything in the, in the middle of the molecule moving and the electrons, he's got them all in orbit, just like he has the planets in orbit. So the macro, the macro world and the micro world are all managed by God, which means, yes, every horrible thing and every sinful thing is ultimately governed by God. And that's a problem, but... The center of the solution to the problem is a choice you have to make about the cross. This is what has centered me anyway. When you go to Acts chapter 4, verses 27 and 28, and you read that Herod and Pontius Pilate and the Gentiles and the Jews were all gathered together to do what your hand and your plan had predestined to take place, in the killing of Jesus, you have God's plan and hand predestining the most horrible sins ever committed. Pilate's choices, the soldier's cruel mockery, the uh, piercing of his side, the cries, crucify him, crucify him. This, these few hours in history was the climax of the worst wickedness that has ever been performed on the planet or ever will be. And God planned it that we might be saved from those sins. In other words, what the devil did in unleashing all that was commit suicide. And I pray that when you contemplate believing in a sovereign God who governs the dust motes the waves, including tsunamis, when you contemplate believing in a totally sovereign God, you will center it right on the cross because you'll go crazy otherwise. You will. These things have driven people mad, but it, it won't drive you mad if you say, he loves me and he governed the most wicked thing that ever happened in the world, the crucifixion of my Savior and my God. If you stay right there and then just work out from there as far as your mind can handle, then you'll be safe. Your mind will be safe. Your heart will be safe because you'll keep humble. People get very arrogant with these kinds of doctrines. They can use them to club people. But if you stay with the cross, uh, you won't. I mean, just one more thing on this. Um, this is right off my front burner because we're reading, you and I and a lot of other people in Bethlehem are reading through Acts. Because we're reading through the Bible, and we start in Genesis, we go to Psalms, we read Acts and, and Matthew. Mm -hmm. We just read in chapter 2, where Peter said, 
in the sermon to the people who had killed Jesus, you acted in ignorance. He didn't forgive them for that. He said they have to repent. You acted in ignorance, but God fulfilled what he had promised by the prophets that the Christ must suffer. That's like 222 or somewhere in there. Um, what that said to me was, again, okay, th these people didn't know what they were doing. God knew what he was doing. So the crucifixion of his son was, according to Isaiah 53, 10, the bruising by the father of the son, and therefore the worst sin that was ever committed was ordained by God, and the answer is yes. He controls everything, and he does it for his glory and our good.